everybody. Sorry, I had to answer to Mother Nature. <laughs> you know, we all do that. <coughs> anyway, welcome to Ginger's Ranch Show. Uh, it's Wednesday, September 7th. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, and it's after, you know, a couple of days after Labor Day and everything. So we're kind of done with summer, pretty much. Except that still, Southern California still feels like summer. Um, I hope that they start cooling off soon and get some nice cooling rains in there. And just have a gradual cool down. Not a drastic temperature swings, but some gradual cool down, which they really need. Uh, sorry about Monday, I just had a lot to do and things straighten out and everything, so it's all cool, we're all, we're all kosher here. Um, I hope you guys are doing good. Uh, and I'm still working on some stuff on my store, so yes, I know I keep talking about it, but it takes, when I do any kind of changes on the store, it takes at least a day for it to, the changes to catch up on their servers with Shopify. So it will show up, so it won't show up right away that day when I do the changes. And normally it shows up like uh, the next day or the day after. So, you know, you have to give it kind of like 12, 24 hours for it to show up. So just to let you know. Um, I understand Shopify is, is setting up more service to handle all that, so we'll, we'll get there on that. Um, of course you know of all the breaking news and everything that's going on regarding he who shall not be named. You know who he is. Um. I'll be so glad when this is all over and that he is put away for life in prison. Uh, this is the worst crime that he's ever committed with espionage. Okay, if he does or does not know what it really is. Um, so. <coughs> He needs to be in jail, like now, not down the road. He has, um, there's a Trump appointed judge, I didn't get her name, but, uh, she was appointed like two days after, uh, he came into office. And, uh, so she agreed to do this special master thing uh, regarding national security documents. She doesn't want the DOJ to look at it. Well, I'm sorry. This is federal. These are federal documents pertaining to our national security here. And frankly, she's impeding justice. And I think now the DOJ needs to, need to indict her. Threaten her with, we don't care if you're a federal judge. You just don't do this. You don't know a thing how all this works. And she should be told that. And it's stupid. It's not going to help him. It's not going to help her. They have the documents already. And they're probably by then before all this appointment happened. Or so-called appoint appointing happened. Uh, DOJ could give her the middle finger. And say, no. It's being looked at. Evidence is being processed. So, Trump is already, he's already about one step away being, stepping into a jail cell. And I hope that happens soon, I really do. And, really stupid. And it sounds like to me he, as a narcissist, he doesn't really care about the rules, doesn't really care about anything or anything, how it works. I think it should work his way and his mind. Well, that doesn't go that way. It's not how it's set up. Um, so we need to slap back and slap back hard. 
um, and the GOJ probably by they're probably uh, applying for appeal right now and I'm sure that the other court district like the 11th court district will uh, or the 9th court circuit court will say yeah this is this is full crap and they should throw that out they should throw out this judge's restriction or whatever you call it and for it to proceed on uh, many of the legal experts here are saying what that judge did was wrong very wrong and what i can't understand is prior to he who shall not be named moved out of the white house why didn't they double check everything and make sure everything was uh given back to uh the nsa and to uh cia those documents given back to them why wasn't all that secured unless he's been stealing them all along so i just hope they get this fixed i really do and i hope that i'm sure the nsa and the cia have changed a lot of the stuff i bet they really have because now these security national security documents uh probably are pretty useless but still they should be secured now um there is a footnote in all this and through sources that are closed melania trump uh she did not want anybody touching her things in her room well of course the fbi was going through everything in the residence there to find all the documents and everything and they did find a lot of them um and she's changing out her some of her stuff and everything but she's never never allowed from what i understand she's never allowed trump in her bedroom ever it's off limits to him and i'm sure she has a lot of double locks in there um it sounds like to me she doesn't trust him anymore and can't stand him well you know how she kept slapping him away and everything you know in the last year that he was in office she was like no <laughs> uh it's getting to the point now he was getting pretty annoying and uh i can't say i blame her uh you should not play all the blame on melania at all and i'm sure that in some ways uh she could have been basically forced to marry trump and i bet her parents did but you don't know you don't know the whole story uh it's like judging books by its cover so you don't really know what's going on but you can you know give suspicion more than anything anyway um also there was good strong evidence that she may have tipped off the fbi which she saw and she saw those documents like what are they doing here yeah i i agree with you there nancy um she probably saw the documents and called the fbi and say look i know where those docs are and what he and his lawyer had said they're lying they didn't hand everything back they were all down here and i bet that she tipped it off the fbi uh and the doj and say look he's lying and i'm tired of this tired of the games that's been played and he's been, if I understand, prior to all the, prior to, uh, the search warrant, they gave him a number of chances to prove it, and he never did. They just, he just, we gave him all back.
back to you and they go, no, you didn't. Because we have a list of the documents, and they probably do have a list of the documents there. And in the DOJ and the CIA, they have that list. And but nope. We don't have it here, you have it there. So, good for Melania. Uh, now, on a brighter side, and kind of amusing side, President Biden and Miss Dr. Jill Biden, she, um, they did a presentation that hanged President Obama's and Michelle's portraits in the White House. And, um, I'm going to do that, uh, video in a, in a bit. Uh, if you go to YouTube and look it up on the news, they will have a video posted in that. Uh, I didn't have a chance because the video came in much late. They're having, YouTube's been having some problems unloading stuff. And, um, well, like on Monday, and good thing I didn't do my, um, rant on Monday. I didn't know this, but my TV and other stuff portions of my internet went down. So that's probably, you know, blessing in disguise there. So, but it's up and running now, which is good. So, um, now as far as the tradition, since President Biden is reviving that tradition which Trump broke, uh, I doubt Trump's Portrait's going to be hanging in the White House. I really do. Uh, so, uh, I doubt that portrait's going to be in the White House ever. Now, I'll bet your President Biden says, nope, tip for tap. Uh, and uh, the speeches that President Biden said, I agree with. There is an extreme group, probably very small groups, but there is extreme groups that are trying to, sorry, my allergies. There is extreme groups that, um, want to regain the power. And, um, the Lincoln Project, for example, they're not extreme. They're made up of former Republicans who are, who are forming, uh, looks like being another for, uh, party forming. Um, it could be a spin-off from the old GOP, we don't know. But we hope something can be done about the political system. It badly needs an overhaul, it really does. And also, an overhaul needs to be done on the pay. Uh, we need to have strict regulations in place where A, both the Senate and the House cannot do work in the stock market. They can work it after they retire, but they can't do it during when they're working for the people in the United States. Two, the lobbyists. There should be no foreign lobbyists in there. Also, there should be no corporate lobbyists in there. Those two groups should be barred from entering the capital, and they have no right to lobby there. The only group of lobbyists there is you and me. We're the guys that should be telling what our representatives and senators should be doing. Uh, you know, what needs changes need to be made. Also, we need to put in place a, um, well, I think it should belong in the arm of the Federal Elections Commission that, uh, Term limits need to be put in place. There were term term limits put in place for president and vice president, but there should be term limits put in place in Congress and age limits. I know it's age. Did you say thirty four? Age thirty five for president. Um. Age three. Thirty five elected for president. Well, they need to put age limit on the, toward the end. So, 
I would say it's 35 to 69, 68, 69, and after that, I can't run anymore. Um, uh, and the same way in Congress. Uh, what you should do for Congress, for a Senate, in the House, it should be two term limits. Two term limits. Arthur should be on the same format, four years, as the President. Put it all in the same format, not the midterm crap or anything else. It should be on the same format. Four years for senator and four years for rep. And if the senators, and, and as far as the pay goes, based on what their constituents make per state. In other words, if their constituents average what they make, it should be what the senator and or rep rep senator and representative should make, too. Okay. Um, the other thing that we need to look at is to make sure that everybody votes and has the right to vote. And also, Congress needs to go slap back on this Roe v. Wade, and it needs to be put back in place. You don't sit there and tell a woman or a young girl that they can't have an abortion because of rape or because the child is not viable. Uh, many of these guys that put these so-called restrictions in place uh, don't understand how the human anatomy works. They don't understand the medical side of it. The medical experts say no, you don't allow a child that 12 years old, 12, 13 years old to carry a child to term because it will kill them. It really will because the body is still developing and they would cause huge problems and sometimes the baby may have problems too. Uh, you hear horror stories of women pregnant and they're finding out their child's not viable. For example, the, the baby may not have a good you know, may not have a brain or, you know, whatever, a severe birth defect, and they say it's not going to live, or the child dies, dies in womb. Well, when that happens, then the child needs to be removed from the mother. But you just don't want to leave a dead baby in there, and that way can cause considerable sepsis blood poisoning, sepsis, that type of thing. And the body, for some reason, fails to recognize that there's a problem with the baby and it fails to expel it. Well, that's why you have to have uh, surgery to remove the baby. And there's other things that could, could have gone, you know, gone wrong. And these guys, these so-called men, it's just there and say, Oh, they can't do this, they can't do that. I go, really? How about you t trading places and put you in that position? What would you do? And those restrictions are placed on you. What would you do? I'll bet you if that happens, hypothetically that happens, the men would sit there and backpedal so fast it wouldn't be any fun. Um... So, you know, the ideas that I put out for Congress and term limits and age limits, yeah, we need to push on that. We really do. And we need to put corporations in, in their place and say, A, you can't use layoff as an excuse just because you're paid more in taxes. Uh-uh. You're not going to do that. You're restricted from doing that. You can't lay off just because tax or income taxes are placed on you. Uh-uh. They're using, when they say when the taxes are raised, well, they're going to have to lay off people and everything else. Go, no, no, you're not. You're not being fair to the employees. You're forgetting who is building your company. And, uh... I think corporations need to be slapped back for that 
I really do. So, um, no, that's an excuse. That's a cop out by mega corporations when they're told, no, you've got to pay 70% of your income tax on that. Because that pays for infrastructure, education and infra infrastructure. If they can't understand that, then they really have no business being in business. The only businesses that should be tax exempt, like your cottage industry, like small online businesses, like mine that I own. I own a, I own an online store. I'm just one person. They should be income tax exempt. Uh, even on property tax, they should be exempt for seniors that are 65 and over because they don't have. They don't have kids in the house anymore. And they should not be asked to pay for property taxes to the school. School should be paid for by other means, such as big corporations, if they want well-educated employees. And all the stuff that's going on, uh, all the banned books and everything that's happening. Um, you know, it's ridiculous. It really is. So let's unban the book. Make kids learn the history. Make them a required reading to write, read these books. Make them learn critical thinking. And the other thing that really kind of bothers me is that they want to put prayer back in school. Well, kids probably silent praying all the time uh, because of a test or if they got into trouble, you know, that type of thing. Um, no, the prayers, if you want to pray, you can pray outside, pray, pray with nature, or you could pray in the, in the church, but not in school. Schools are designed for education, and uh, kids should not be spending all their time praying when they should be studying for other subjects. I did kind of a turnabout on that way, because I remember going through school, um, My first grade teacher, this is prior to my real bad bout of strep throat that I've been kept having. Um, she did pray. She was a Methodist and she prayed once a week, which was fine. We were we were all for it, you know. It kept us kids on the straight and narrow, kept us out of trouble. But what we learned in uh, 1963 when O'Hara pushed the Supreme Court saying no, his uh, prayer should be taken out of school. Um, many of us were kind of um, upset about that, but you know, as years gone by, it didn't really bother me anymore. Because um, we were busy learning other things. And, uh, and probably the prayer in school probably worked for a time in the 1800s and everything else because things were still being set up in the United States. Uh, there were not any public schools per se set up yet. So you have a lot of private schools or small community schools and they did put prayer, teachers put prayer and everything else in there. Some did, some didn't. It was left up to them. Um, but, uh, things are a little different now. Anyway, it's 126 already. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I will see you on Friday. And I hope all is well. And, uh, keep an eye on the news and everything that's going on. And be sure to check out my store, gingerstoreandmore.com. Uh, it's really 
nice redesign. Now, Nancy, I don't know, did you look, did, did you get a chance to look at my new store design? I haven't heard back from you on that, so. Um, anyway, hope all is well. Take care. Um, and I will see you guys later. Okay? Love to all. And I will also be posting this video to, uh, my YouTube channel as well. Okay? Because I want to build that up and I can start, um, uh, selling merchandise through that too. So, anyway, talk to you later. Love you. Bye-bye.